hem of your robe is where our healing lies. The wounds in your hands are where our life resides. Your love is moving, moving among us. We're desperate to see the beauty of your face. We're longing to know the wonders of your grace. Your love is moving, moving among us. So we reach, we reach our hands to you. is how we welcome you. The joy in our lives is your love breaking through. Your love is moving, moving among us. Thank you, Lord. So we Good evening. Welcome to St. Michael. 
we offer a special welcome to all visitors who are with us this evening and to those viewing the live stream. Printed worship aids are available at the entrances. Now that St. Michael's School is back in session, our school masses will begin this Wednesday. Please note that the time is moved to 7.50 a.m. during the school year. Faith formation classes begin soon, and children's choir begins this Wednesday. So please register as soon as possible so that we can prepare for classes. Catechists and table leaders are still needed for faith formation. We will provide you with training, materials, and support. Volunteers are also needed to help with children's liturgy of the word on Sundays. Please see the bulletin for more information. If you are interested in helping to shape next year's small group ministry program at our parish, the Synod team at St. Michael invites you to participate in a seven session planning workshop starting September 24th. We will meet weekly to identify our small group opportunities and potential leaders. Please see the Synod team members in the Northex after Mass for more information. Healing Hearts Ministry, for those grieving a loved one, will begin on Monday. Please see the bulletin for more information. Save the date for our Parish Ball Festival on Saturday, September 30th. Donations and volunteers are needed. Please see the bulletin for more information. 50-50 raffle tickets are ready for pickup at the exits. Let us rise and sing number 569 in the Maroon Gather hymnal, Open My Eyes. Number 569. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. As we gather the pray, we have many to lift up in prayer this weekend. Megan and Justin, who were just married here a little over an hour ago. Um, we've, we've got a lot of fall weddings, actually, so let's keep those couples preparing for marriage in our prayer. I've got four to baptize tomorrow morning, three at the 1030 Mass, so come back and see how many I can carry at one time. The oldest one is seven, so I don't think I'm going to get all three together. Uh, but let's definitely keep them in prayer. We, uh, as we gather to pray, we pause as always to reflect on how we have sinned. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, 
through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today
us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us sing joyfully songs to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God. And we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today Today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my word. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandments there may be are summed up in this saying namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence, Love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won your brother over. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat them as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which you are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm smiling in part because I just remembered about 24 hours ago from this pulpit, Tom Munger's sons gave one of the best eulogies I've heard in a long time, but it was a eulogy that could fit a lot of dads, among other things. Every time they came over to see their dad, they had to fix his phone because it was, it was frozen. And, and, and they said he would have at least 50 apps open, and at least half of them were weather apps. I think he broke my dad's record. I like that. In the Holy Land, almost everywhere you go, if there's a hillside, there's a watchtower. Watchtowers were a protection from danger, a place you could see trouble coming from a distance and issue a warning. They're not actually all that big. Usually they're way up on top of the hillside, but they're very practical. Now, in our first reading, the prophet Ezekiel is told that he has been appointed the watchman for Israel. He's given a unique charge by God to warn the wicked and call them to change their ways. He wouldn't need a watchtower because God would tell him what the people are doing and how they must be warned. Now, as you may remember, from, uh, when we talked about Jeremiah last week, it's not a very popular job to have. He was called to issue a, or he was supposed to be issuing a call to change that many people didn't want to hear. A few of us want to hear that call to change. But notice the Lord says to Ezekiel, you will be held responsible if you don't issue the warning. Now about 600 years later, Jesus is teaching his followers about the obligations they have to help one another find the way to heaven. We're in chapter 18 now. We skipped ahead a bit. Before we get to this, there's a series of instructions about how a community can live together while praising the Lord. Be humble like a little child. Make sure you don't do anything that would scandalize someone else, especially the little ones in this world, the simple ones in this world, anything that would cause them to sin. Be like that shepherd who leaves the 99 sheep behind to go out after the one lost sheep who has strayed. So we lead in chapter 18 up to this point. Now we have today's gospel passage, which is easy to understand, but very challenging to live, I think. When are we, like the prophets, obligated to correct our brother or sister who has sinned? And I add, when is it none of our business? First, I don't think the Lord is talking about those little problems we have from day to day with the people that we love. That, you know, we get upset over some kind of unkind word or action. Not every wrong needs correction. St. Paul makes it clear that there is no limit to love's forbearance, no limit on forgiveness. 
Our love normally should be able to overlook and let go of so many of those minor offenses. And also, it's not ours to correct every person on the face of this earth. When someone we love has seriously sinned, or we see them going down that path where their immortal soul may be in danger, yes, we have a duty to speak out, and that's what this gospel is all about. However, with folks who are relative strangers, I often ask myself, did anyone ask for your opinion, Tom? And then I answer myself, no, and I keep my mouth shut. Where it does seem to be a serious matter, though, involving someone close to you, Look at the beauty of this process aimed not at making someone pay for what they've done, regret what they've done, but simply helping them mend their ways so they can be reconciled to their Heavenly Father, reconciled to the body, members of the body of Christ. Because sin has such an awful way of dividing us, setting us apart from God's love, the love of others. Now, again, the first step seems very obvious, but difficult. Go to them privately and tell them privately that something is wrong. Something needs to change. I say that's difficult because we might get treated like the prophets were treated. Think about it. Someone tells me, you've done this and such and such and such and such and you're a sinner. My reaction is not going to be good no matter how they couch that message. Also, some of those ways that maybe people have sinned against us, if we go to them one-on-one, Sometimes they're going to help point out, if we're listening carefully, how we're part of the problem. We're a party to the sin. But above all, it's so important to start one-on-one. Yet, how often do we take kind of the opposite approach? That is, especially in those times when our feelings are hurt, we don't go to the person, we broadcast it at everyone else. Do you know what Deacon Terry did to me this last week? And he doesn't even show up for 5 o'clock Mass. Not Deacon Terry. Don't tell him that. (laughs) Now the rest of the process seems simple enough. And the way I think of this, though, is again, at each point we must stop and say, is it really worth going on? In some cases, for matters that are serious enough, it's good enough to go talk to them and let them work it out with the Lord. Sometimes, again, when matters are so serious, we need to get a few other people together and hopefully cause them to listen, cause them to say, no, there's something I need to see here that I'm not seeing, and I need to change. And grave matters, grave enough matters, can get to the point where we bring in the whole church. Or the final step is a type of excommunication. You stop talking. Again, we get that one backwards so often. How many people here, we won't call for a raise of hands, how many people here have given someone the silent treatment? I'm not talking to him until he figures out what he's done wrong. Doesn't work with me, I'll tell you that one. I've got to be told. Finally, uh, most importantly, all of this has to be done with love. Sometimes we have to wait till we move, can move beyond any hurt feelings we have that might get in the way. But more than anything, we just have to let those we love know that we've been watching because, because I love you, because I care what happens to you. Try to speak with the voice of the Lord of mercy who is always watching over all his children, always concerned especially about that one lost little sheep. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's infinite love for us, we name our needs this day. For the church, that we will be an example of reconciling love for all the world as we strive to heal the differences that arise among ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to terrorism and for the lives lost in the terrorist attacks 22 years ago on September 11th, and for those who have suffered in the aftermath of those attacks, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. For all those who teach the faith and spread the good news of God's infinite mercy to students, young and old, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families that are alienated or in conflict, that God will remove the barriers and heal the hurts that have caused division. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Megan and Justin, who are married here today, and for all engaged and married couples, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially those within our parish community, may they be healed in body, mind, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, including those who have recently died, Andy Ostertag, brother of Tim Ostertag, and for Terry Mulkin, for whom this Mass is offered, grant them the fullness of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for always listening to us as we cry out to you. Grant what we truly need this day, through Christ our Lord. Let us sing by our love. You'll find the words in the worship aid.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. O God, who give us a gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged a changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. So with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread And drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorials of death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to sing, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, ladies. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion song is the body of Christ. You'll find it in the worship aid. This is the body of Christ. Beautiful, broken, and blessed. Miracle of the greatest of loves. Presence of God in our midst. This is the cup that he shares. Endlessly. saved now and forevermore Amen Amen We are healed by the bread of life Amen Amen We are one in the body of Christ We are one in Let us pray.
Grant that your faithful Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. It is a very busy time of the year. School is off to a great start, and we keep praying for all those teachers and students, uh, all involved in education. Um, we are beginning our faith formation year soon. I've been saying it for weeks, parents. Please, please get your children registered. Until we know that we have enough, uh, enough catechists, we still need some more help. Uh, we, we just check out the bulletin or talk to any of the people involved in faith formation, even Deacon Terry, although I teased in my homily. He's a good guy. He'll be happy to tell you more about how easy it is to help pass on the faith as a, a catechist for faith formation. Um, we're responding to Archbishop Hebda's uh, Synod Initiative. Next, as I've been talking about, next Lent we're going to have small faith caring groups. You'll hear more about that soon. But we're calling a number of people to get involved in some way. Some will be small group leaders. There's other jobs too. So if you get a call asking you to participate in some training this fall, please be generous. Please say yes. Uh, a lot of other important information in there. Uh, still help needed for the fall festival, 50-50 uh, raffle tickets are there for sale. And finally, I, I was reminded by a visitor, one of my favorite stories. You know, I've, I've been asked to do about every kind of fundraiser on the face of this earth. But one of my favorite memories, I was brand new in a parish, and they asked me if I would be part of pizza with the priests. And the, the deal was, whoever raised enough money for the school marathon, or the, the most amount of money, or got the most pledges, something like that, and during lunch hour, I got to have pizza brought in, just the few of them and the priest and their friends got to eat the pizza in front of everyone else. It was a bunch of second and third graders, and, and the pieces of pizza were bigger than their heads, and you just wouldn't believe how much pizza they can put away. I, I still remember this 20 years later, and it makes me smile. I've got the picture, in fact. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Well, to sing all that we have seen, you'll find it on the back page of the worship aid. All that we have seen, we will not hide away. We will hold it up.
Proclaim to 